Hey, what's up, you guys? It's Nicholas Lionrider, and in today's video, I am going to be teaching you how to create a brand new Planet Zoo prop mod pack using the Axie workflow. So before I get started on today's video, I should add a little disclaimer that the creator of Axie, Inaki, has been working on a prop mod tool in the background, which is basically going to streamline this process even more than I am already showing you how to do. However, that's taking a little bit longer than usual, so I thought I would finally release this information if anyone was, you know, ready to, you know, start creating prop mods with Axie. So, what can Axie do for your prop mods? It can basically streamline, uh, you know, the workflow to be much easier than the old tutorial. And more importantly, it gives you a lot more customization options. You can change the flexi color options. You can change if it's a billboard or not. You can add custom properties, like if you want it to be a plant, if you want to change where the um, climbing points are and stuff. There's a lot of different options with Axie and it's very powerful and you have a lot more flexibility with creating packs that you want and not just having to base it off of an existing one. So with that being said, let's get started. So the first thing before you start anything is of course you want to have Axie installed. If you do not have Axie installed already, you can go to Nexus and you can download it from Anaki's page it's basically going to be required for all mods from now on, so you can definitely check it out. It's going to be uh, just placed in your OVL data folder, and I have a whole tutorial on how to install it and stuff on my channel. So first things first, download Axie. That's very important. The next thing you're going to want to do is have your updated Cobra tools. So updated Cobra, Cobra tools should be anything after, uh, I, I have this date as this was from February 28th, 2022. So I'm going to be using this one for this tutorial. However, even newer versions are also going to have the same tools, if not better stuff. So you're basically just going to want to make sure that you have this thing, which is the mod tool GUI. So if that is all good, the last thing you're going to want to install, which will be in my description, is going to be this template, which is going to be the prop mod template that I am going to provide you guys. And it is basically going to be a mod that just literally you're going to, I'm going to walk you through how to actually just turn this template into your own mod, however you'd like. So with that being said, let's start the process. So the first thing that we're going to do, we're going to go to our OVL data folder and we're going to create our first mod folder. So this is very similar to how it was before. However, we are no longer bound by the limitations of character space. So we can name this whatever we would like. So if we would like to call this test mod pack, that totally works. So test mod pack, and it can be left empty for now because a cool thing about the mod GUI, it will build the mod for us. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to essentially copy the mod template paste it in a folder somewhere else on our desktop. And this is gonna be what we're gonna be building the mod out of. So this template slash pack, we're going to build separately from OVL data. You shouldn't be really messing with OVL data until the very end. So all you gotta really do is everywhere where it says prop mod template, essentially just rename it to what we named our thing. So in this case, it was test mod pack. So as long as I just change it to test mod pack, there we go. Now we go in here and again, 99% of this workflow I have created is going to be learning just how to rename stuff. So if we first start off with the manifest data, we're going to change where it says prop mod template to test mod pack, done, simple as that. Now we are going to still need a UUID so that's very simple. You could just type in UUID generator, pull it up, copy it, and paste it into here. There we go. Done. Manifest is all set. Next up, we go into our init. So I have actually provided you four template models for everything that we're going to be using here. Now, just to work, uh, walk you through what these four templates are, the first one is going to be a very, very basic generic prop. This is going to be something like a wheelbarrow or something. You're not going to really change anything. Doesn't have to be flexi color, doesn't have to be special in any way. It is just a generic prop. 
the next one is going to be a billboard item. So it's going to basically be something that you can add the billboard ability to. So stuff like in the gift shop pack, I added t-shirts and hats and stuff. So that's going to be the uh, second one. The third one is going to be a flexi color item. So flexi color items are, you know, stuff that you can change the flexi color options of. And the fourth one is going to be a plant item. Now, I'll be honest, I think I, I think I got the right order in that, but I honestly want to just recheck really quick. Um, so yeah, first one is a basic item. Second one is going to be our um, billboard. And then, yeah, third one, flexi call. Yep, yeah, okay, so I had it right. So <laughs> just wanted to make sure that, it, that I wasn't like gonna, gonna give you guys any incorrect information. So once we do that, again, the entire process, I have dumbed it down to be about as simple as possible. Everywhere where it says prop mod template, just change it to say, uh, you know, whatever your mod pack is. So in this case, test mod pack. It'll say test mod pack slash models, test mod pack. And this is going to just be all we're doing for a long time is just going to be constantly just taking each of these and changing them. So we just want to do this test mod pack 002 model. And then we open it up in notepad and change it. Like I said, everything is very simple. Now this tutorial is also assuming that you know how to you know already create a basic model and stuff and you if you're going to be doing a whole mod pack you should probably know the basics at least on how to do the old workflow at least to some basic level but for the most part this is pretty very like very simple so again more renaming of everything prop mod template prop mod template or uh pro, sorry now I'm confusing myself. Test mod pack. <laughs> test mod pack, test mod pack, blah, blah, blah. And finally, we are doing the last two. So we rename it again. Test mod pack. Open it in notepad. Test mod pack. Test mod pack. <laughs> There, again, it is very, very, you know, almost monotonous how simple I made this. It's just very tedious a little bit because you're just going to be typing the same thing over and over again. And there are members of the community, like I said, Anaki is streamlining this process that it's going to automatically do all this renaming for you so you don't have to manually. But for now, you know, it's pretty straightforward. Prop mod or uh, test mod pack icons. So, assuming you did everything correctly, you just basically renamed everything, you're going to have your four model in it and a UI in it already created. So from there, we can just kind of go into localized English and believe it or not, all you're gonna be doing is just renaming stuff again. So these are gonna be the item names. So for instance, we're gonna do test mod pack one, two, Let me just copy it actually it's probably easier two three and four and so with this lock file i actually went ahead and i added some extra things for us so this is going to be the theme that it's going to actually look for so in this case, we're going to be changing the theme to be test mod pack, and that'll add a custom theme to actually recognize our um, mod pack when we're search searching for it in the game. So you can make whatever theme you want. If you wanted to make a aquarium pack, you can make the theme aquarium. If you want to make it whatever, just as long as it's pretty much consistent with your naming convention of your folder, um, everything is going to be the same. And then I also added the modded tag, which you do not need to actually modify at all. It should already be good. And then past that, you can name this whatever you want. Like even as long as the naming convention's right, you can name it, 
you know, Safari Pack, whatever. It doesn't matter. You can name them whatever you'd like. And then obviously here's our, our prop items. You have basic template one, two, three, and four. And, you know, FlexiColor, Billboard, it just kind of walks you through whatever. But obviously, let's say you wanted to make a second Billboard item. Event eventually what you would do is just kind of copy this and then name this five and then change this to be Billboard item five. Like, you know, the whole workflow is just trying to work with numeric values. So everything can just be incremented by one you're able to up until this point go up to 999 items if if you ever got to 999 items in a single pack you should probably just split up the pack so in this particular case i think the numeric system works incredibly well and it's going to be very useful so before we uh get into some other stuff i want to just do the ui first it's very similar it's just test mod pack icons and then uh, we're going to just use the text file. So test mod pack one, test mod pack two, test mod pack three, and test mod pack four. So there you go, that works. Next up, we have the models, same exact thing. So. I have already provided um, examples of what each uh, item would look like, but obviously you can change these to be any model you'd like. So if you'd like them to be, um, uh, you know, some, if you want a model to be based off of a different type of tree or a different type of prop, you would just basically swap out the, you would extract the OVL from whatever the base item is and then put it inside of here. And this just, as an example, the first one uses the uh, plumeria plant, the second one uses the uh, billboard, and the third one uses like the safari jeep, and the fourth one uses some kind of tree. I think it's the beech tree. So they're basically just examples, but you can swap them and we're gonna do that later. So we've done now everything except for the last thing, which is the main folder. So anyone who is familiar with the old workflow knows that if we, you know, kind of navigate over to our OVL data, most props, prop mods, let's just go into uh, prop Afro, so the Safari pack, you'd notice we had a bunch of asset packages, right? And asset packages were essential to actually gaining the data that you needed to get a lot of these props working. And as you can see, they're very, very big and cumbersome and they take up a lot of space and a lot of rendering power and stuff. And the other aspect is they're full of junk that you don't usually want. So as an example, the Safari pack had a few base game OVLs uh, from the asset package, which meant that just to get the handful of base game items I wanted for the Safari, Safari pack, like the Jeep and stuff, I had to download every single base game items asset package. That's not optimized. That's not good. So how do we get over this? And similarly, we all had a main OVL. Now here's the beauty of the new workflow, right? So what we're essentially doing is building our own custom main folder that contains the asset package inside of it. So the, it's going to basically condense everything down to just its own folder. So this acts as both your asset package and your main file because it has stripped down everything to the bare minimum. You have your UI, which we'll do right now, you know, test mod pack, um, 001 test mod pack 002 and this is just the thing that basically pointed to where the UI was located so if you had let's say a you know prop that needed uh, icon or whatever normally it would you know you need to download the asset package and then manually change where it was located now it's very simple you just literally uh, basically just rename the stuff to the same thing and it should if you uh, followed this tutorial it should just point to the icons folder that i have already uh, set up for you so that is very very simple so here we go so we're just changing everything to test mod pack so we'll do that really quick test mod 
pack test mod pack and finally test mod pack and what's funny is we're almost done believe it or not like i know it seems like you know it's taking a long time and stuff and the reality is it's just mind numbing it's not difficult it is literally just renaming everything so our ui is now done so now we'll get to our three luas so i'm gonna vaguely explain to you what the three luas are two of these are very simple all you got to do is find you know prop mod template change it to test mod pack or whatever your pack name is and then when we open this one up it is just basically the um lua that is going to mention is axi working it, it, that, that so all we're gonna do is similarly we're gonna change where it says prop mod template to test mod pack and we're gonna replace all cool then we save it that lua is done we don't have to worry about it for the rest of the time next up we have the actual prop mod template lua we're going to change it to the prop mod pack lua open that one up and again as you can see it's very stripped down from what the base game luas looked like so all we're going to do again is where it says prop mod template change it to test mod pack replace all and we're done with that one so almost done with our luas and so the last one is going to be the i guess most complicated but it's not once i explain everything so this prefab data lua acts as your asset package .ovl if that makes sense to anyone who has done the previous workflow this is going to be where you actually put in all of the information about its properties, whether it's FlexiColor, whether it's a billboard, whether it's whatever. And so if we open this one up, it's a bit daunting at first. It's a very long thing of text, but I have actually gone through and kind of uh, like cited everything that is going to explain how everything works. And I'm gonna walk you through it. But the first things first, we are going to essentially do search and then believe it or not search and replace everything that says prop mod template to test mod pack replace everything and then if you were to just save this as is right now your pack would work if we were to build it but i want to just quickly explain to you everything in this actual you know setup so first things first the first um prop right here is test mod pack zero and this goes all the way down to where it says game uh all the way down to test mod pack two right so this is all the giant prefab of a basic item now as you get better at this you don't even you really don't need all of this you can actually strip it down to the most bare bones version really you only need the game um uh game version of the prefab but you know i wanted to put everything in here just that you're going to you know understand the workflow a little bit better and how it all works so first things first you can see right here it says default simple prefab it creates a static scenery object with no special gameplay features or anything and so right here it says blows the name of your first prop in the pack it should be the same name as the content folder and use the same numeric three digit number starting with 001 so as we saw before you have 001 002 003 and everything in your thing should line up with this so everything is pointing back to this 001 mod so if we just go through here we can see some of the actual uh data on it so the hit check model below is the name of your data edited object so this is going to be what object it uses as a base for its hitbox so you're going to want to make sure that it just has the same name as the hitbox in game it's usually the same exact name as the base game item so if it was the uh safari off-road vehicle it would be ao underscore off-road vehicle dot you know in in this case i'm using the aquatic pack sw brass surfaces uh two by two uh, I think it's normally grass surfaces, but I changed it because I data edited it. So that's pretty simple. Um, so that, like I said, is just going to be whatever the model name is. So it's very straightforward. 
Next up, you have the model folder name. So this folder simply needs to be the same folder as this one in the models folder. Again, if you use my workflow, you shouldn't even have to worry about that. It should already be done for you. So scrolling down, this is a bunch of nonsense. You, you can totally ignore it. Anything that isn't highlighted in green, you can pretty much ignore. Same thing here. You have the uh, data edit name. So this is the model name again. This should probably be the exact same as the hit check name. So it's very simple. Here's another secret about Axie I should mention. Um, you don't actually need to uh, data edit anymore. Hypothetically, I can just use um, any object I want and just name it f properly. So we could actually kind of show you how to do that right now. So let's actually, from scratch, show you how I got this model thing. So let's delete the model, you know, entirely. And we're gonna open up our Cobra tools the way we normally would. So we're gonna go into OVL, GUI, dot, you know, Python. So that's gonna open it up. Uh, we're going to get the workflow. We're going to go to 1.6. And let's just grab a base game item that, you know, doesn't have any special properties about it. We'll go to scenery, themes. We'll do East Asia theme. And we'll look for the, uh, what what's a good example? I'm pretty sure there's like a wheel or cart. We'll do the East Asian cart. So as you can see here, it's EA cart and the item name is EA cart. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna unpack it in our folder so that we created, you know, our template folder. I'm not sure where you put it on yours. Obviously I keep it with all of my other mods, but I keep all my prop mods it packs in a folder. So we're gonna go to our pack, which was test mod pack. And then we're just gonna dump everything into that model folder. And so, like I said, here's our East Station cart. I didn't even have to da da edit it. As long as the asset package is pointing to the right thing, we can keep everything exactly the way it is. So where it says, you know, grass surfaces, we're gonna change this to EA cart. And where it says, you know, model, we're gonna change this to EA cart. And then now we go to the game and then we change this to say EA cart. And then right here, this is already done for us. This is the same, you know, prop folder. And then this is looking for the model. We do EA cart. And then past that, so down here, this is if you want to add a custom sound effect. These are the options you have and uh, using the base game sound effects. And what it essentially does is lets you choose a small, medium, or large version of whatever prop you'd like. And then you can choose one of these things. So as an example, uh, you want a squishy sound that is like for like a bug or something. I think I used uh, the ice texture small and you just plug them in here. In our case, we probably wanna do, it's a cart. So we do want the wood sound effect and we'll do medium. That actually sounds about right. So. You can kind of mix and match. You can do plastic large, plastic small, none large, none small, tree. They all have different sound effects. You can tamper around with them. Here's the list, like I said. Um, once you get good at this, you could probably just remove it, but I like to keep it there just as a reference point. And then finally, we're just going to look again for the uh, name of the model. So in this case, it's EA cart. And we should be good. So now that we have done everything there we should have a working um, prop mod essentially for the first one so before we move on to kind of the more advanced ones I'm actually going to save um, this model and build it for us so you know assuming you did everything correctly we can open up our tool and I'm gonna show you the new tool it's the mod tool GUI and it's this little thing. And you might be like, what is this? I've never seen this before and I've been modding for a while. It's very simple. It basically creates your mod pack using this uh, temporary folder we did. So what we're essentially going to do, we're gonna obviously flip it to Planet Zoo 1.6 and we're going to navigate over to this folder where we have been building our mod. So in this case, we're looking for where it says test mod pack 
we're going to put it here. And this is going to be what it's referencing. And then we're going to plug in where it's going to build it. In this case, we're going to navigate over to our OVL data again. And we're going to go to test mod pack, the blank folder, and we're going to copy that. And so basically what it's doing is it's going to transfer all of the data from our uh, mod pack that we've been building out of into usable OVLs for the OVL data folder. So if we just go back to the tool, we plug in this. So as you can see, it's going from, you know, my, uh, my prop mod workflow folder into my OVL data folder. If we hit pack and just make sure it's actually loading, um, Python should just be popping up with everything. You can kind of see everything. And then if we hop back over to OVL data, we should be able to see what it looks like. As you can see, it built our mod pack. So it created OVLs for all of our models. It created lock files um, for our, you know, you know, in this case, United States fo folder. It created the UI OVL. It created everything in a nice, clean, concise pack. And you want to just quickly make sure that your manifest, uh, you know, actually went through. Sometimes, uh, you know, that, that's an important thing if you want to make sure it loads. And so with that being said, we should now have at minimum our East Asian cart working in the game. So we're going to just quickly load Planet Zoo and we're going to test out if our East Asian cart actually worked. And just so that I actually, while that loads in the background, I frankly just want to make sure I actually know what I'm looking for because I forget what I named it. <laughs> so if we go to a localized English United States lock, we're going to be looking for where it says basic template object one. So we're going to wait for it to load and I'm going to uh, cut right here and we'll see you back in game when we can actually check it out. So I'm back. I actually did forget to do one last thing. And that of course is our FDB. I actually totally blanked on, you know, doing that. So all we're going to do again is go into our FDB and quickly do that. So if anyone's familiar with FDBs, it is very, very similar to how we have always done it actually identical. So I have basically gone ahead and stripped down everything to the most basic form to where all you have to do is just change it to be uh, test mod pack one, then test mod pack two, test mod pack three, test mod pack four, and then that should have already updated, you know, your uh, attachment props and your tags and everything else. Obviously, um, what it wouldn't have changed is the theme name. So if we go into our themes, this is what I was mentioning earlier. I made a custom theme that was prop mod template. We're gonna obviously change it to test mod pack and just change it here, just so that it actually recognizes it in game. So it may throw a hissy fit. What you can do is actually go into your um, query and go to tag set and then basically uh, type in this where it says pragma foreign keys off. I already have it loaded, but basically you would type this. It's pragma foreign keys equals off, run it, and then it'll stop complaining <laughs> and you will be able to actually do it. So we do prop uh, or test mod pack in the tag groups. It'll, you know, complain again. We can just run the script. And then it stops complaining. So once you do all of that, uh, everything should be good. We just want to make sure our tags are, yep. So it still says prop mod template. So we want test mod pack, test mod pack. Let me just, That's mod pack, mod, cat, mod, mod pack. Save that. Make sure our UI data is pointing to the right thing because sometimes it won't actually recognize it. So we want to do uh, test mod pack right here where it says mod pa uh, pack template one. You can just usually do it easier if you just copy and paste it and then just change the last numeracy. 
and then you do the same for the description. I've never actually found the description to be an actual thing, it's just kind of a thing that the game says it looks for, but I've never actually found a use for it actually utilize it. So again, your UI, it's same thing as normal props, you should have a thing in attachment props, metagame tags, modular scenery, simulation, themes, if you have tags, obviously your tag set things you want to, you know, check out, make sure that they all look good. It should be like tag groups, tag definitions, and tag set. Theming, and then UI data, and make sure everything's all set. So now that this is good, we can rebuild our pack really quick, make sure that it actually loads, and then, like I said, we will cut back to in-game where we can actually try to place our item. Now here we are inside of Planet Zoo. And if we go into construction and then type in template, as you can see, we have our template object one all set. And as you can see, it's an East Asian cart and it, it looks exactly like an East Asian cart. So let's say you wanted to change this to be any other basic prop, like a, like a totally just cosmetic uh, lamp or bench or something that you didn't want functional. All you'd have to do is just change the textures and model and rebuild and then it would show up in game exactly like this similarly if you wanted to change the ui obviously all you would do is the normal kind of replacement workflow you'd go into your you know ovl we'd navigate over to our ovl data test mod pack we go into the ui icons and then you would essentially unpack it inside of your um build it you know build folder we would unpack our UI there and then that would release obviously the PNG images that we can then uh, you know utilize so as you can see here now we have the UI we can change it to uh, we can change it in Photoshop to whatever we'd like and then repack it and then it would show up in game uh, now newer versions of Cobra tools uh, recognize PNGs and will automatically do that for you otherwise what you would have to do is basically edit the PNG bring it back into um, the OVL and then re-unpack it because what it's really looking for is the text file the DDS and PNG on somewhat older versions of Cobra like I'm using are not going to recognize that, but that has been since fixed with newer versions. So if you have a very up-to-date version of Cobra, um, that should be no issue whatsoever. So with that being said, we obviously have our cart in game. So the next thing that we're going to be uh, teaching you quickly is the, you know, how to make a billboard item, a flexi color item, and a plant. All three of them are very, very simple if you can figure out how to make the basic item. Because once again, if we go into prefab data um, and we scroll down to example two, as you can see, it is the same exact workflow. Um, you know, obviously I, I use the word temp uh, 002, but again, this is just going to be whatever the model's name is. And then um, from there, you know, fill it out the same thing. So it'll say test mod pack model. Um, so basically, wherever it says temp, this is going to be your model um, name. Everything else you can pretty much ignore. And then this line specifically is going to be the thing that kind of makes it into a billboard item. So by doing that and just copying everything that I have here, you know, the whole just copy the whole thing and paste it. You can see it here. It says custom texture material, blah, blah, blah that will create a uh, brand new billboard so once you do that you can actually spawn in a um you know hypothetical um billboard item and that would be something very similar to um you know these uh, well the plushies aren't a good example but these shirts and stuff that i have um i've shown these off it works exactly like a billboard you get the billboard ui and you can swap it for whatever um you know billboard item you'd like so that is how you do that and then the next thing that we're going to work on is just flexi color same thing i just basically set up a flexi color uh template for us so as you can see here test mod pack 3 it uses the um african off-road vehicle so um 
Now, this is a little bit outdated, so obviously this is back when I thought that you actually needed distilled that edit, but this could very well just be African off-road vehicle instead of Flex One or whatever I named it. Um, and, you know, just copy everything exactly how it is. And so we'll just change this to uh, off-road vehicle and off-road vehicle and um, do I have to have anything else? We'll go back to that in just a second and off-road vehicle. So once we have that, that's good. So here is what determines the flexi color color. So you can keep these exactly the same. I found that the shop fascia of SW is going to be the best for your colors because essentially what it's going to say is um, just uh, when you go into here, color one, color two, color three, color four, which is very good. You know, you're not going to have anything special like some of the base game things that say like, oh, fish color and whatever. But color one, color two, color three, and color four should be, you know, more than enough to explain what you're looking for. So you might be seeing these numbers and being like, how do you actually get them in general? So I can quickly show you how it actually works. And to do that, I'm going to need the help of one of my plushies to kind of uh, exemplify how this works. So we'll take a good old lion plushie. And let's say I wanted to understand how to get this orange, this hex color to be uh, this kind of jumbled up nonsense number. So the real math behind it is math. So if we actually look up hex color um, here, uh, hex color picker, and then type in the hex color that we got, you're gonna get an RGB value. And this is gonna split it up into 205, 115, and 35. And what each of these numbers represents is one of these codes. But as you might be like, but why aren't they the solid numbers? It's because it's a little bit more complicated than that and you would need a calculator. Um, and I'm showing this uh, to you how to do this in the manual way because I'm gonna show you the easy way. But in order to get the 205 to be you know, the uh, first number, what we're going to do is do 205 divided by 255 and we get this long drawn out number. And this would act as our first value. Right, and then you kind of chop it off because after a while it doesn't matter, and that's how we get our number. Now, there's a much simpler way of doing this, and I need to, uh, you know, thank my good old buddy Leaf Productions because he's going to help the community out. He actually went ahead and made a hex color generator Excel uh, file that I'm going to have a link to in the description. And all you need to do to get those same values is just take the hex color plug in the value right here, and then it generates your three numbers for you. So thank you to Leaf for making this tool. It is very useful, and I, you know, that that is very nice. So by doing this, we can just get any colors we want and, you know, plug them in here. So let's say we wanted something with only two flexi-color items. All you got to do is just uh, comment out by doing uh, minus minus, on the color you want, and then obviously the corresponding flexi color thing. So this would give us a you know two flexi color thing. If you wanted only one, you do that. And so that is just the easiest workflow for how to actually do that. But with that being said, that is you know uh, flexi colors in a nutshell. Obviously, like I said, you can change the sound effect if you'd like. But that is flexi color items in a nutshell. The last item is a little bit different, and that is going to be plants. So plants, um, they work very similar to props. What I found is sometimes it's just easier to make a, a normal looking non-flexicolor, non-special prop that looks like a plant than making an actual plant because there isn't a huge benefit in game for the final thing. But as a basic thing, we are using the elm tree as a base. And what you do is just copy everything here. And then, you know, that's the model folder name. And then right here, uh, this is where we would type in the name of the tree. Again, I dat edited the name of the tree to be temp004, but normally you don't need to dat edit it. It can just be whatever the default tree name is. And then um, you can go from here. And the only thing that's important is that your asset packages are always pointing to the model folder name. So you wanna make sure that this matches your init name. 
So with that being said, uh, you would just copy this essentially and include this little skirt. And then that is trees in a nutshell. To make trees extra special, um, if we go into the, you know, look up the Frontier mod pack that I created, that's like the North America pack. As you can see, I have uh, these little things that specify, oh, it's from North America and it's tempered in taiga. So to get that, that is actually more or less um, very straightforward. I don't have it in this template, but all you would do is you would actually go into the default um, game and you can grab uh, this file that I'm going to pull out from the, uh, where is it, North America folder. Uh, basically, it's its own um, special FDB that is plants. If you'd like, I can actually include it in this uh, little, you know, test mod pack that I'm going to be providing. So we'll just go into here and I'm going to actually throw it in. But basically you would just copy this into your main folder next to your um, modular scenery. And then instead of prop nort, which is what I named the North America pack, you would name it test mod pack or whatever your name is. Open up the FDB and then this is very simple. All you gotta do is define the plant, which you know in this case is gonna be like, you know, um, test mod pack 004 in this particular case. Um, we could probably actually get rid of most of these because I don't have that many plants and we only have one plant in this particular pack. And then you can name the species. You define the species by just naming it whatever you want. So you can do test species. Uh, give it a fake ID. doesn't really matter. You can do like, you know, uh, 872 or something. And that just defines a new species of plant. Obviously, to clear everything, it's going to complain just because I'm obviously messing with stuff. Um, but you can clear it. And then, you know, that's our, our new definition. You could do then test species as the plant. And then continent preference. Again, um, if we go through here, um, this is looking for, you know, the plant species. So what we're going to do is just clear everything here. And then change this to, te to test species. Um, let me just do that quick. Test species. And then we'll say that it's from North America and Europe. And so you just type that in. So that would basically uh, fill out the continent right here. It would say, you know, North America, Africa, Eurasia, whatever. Um, and just fill it out that way. And then same thing for the um, biome preferences. This is what defines what... It, this is basically only good if you wanted to play like a franchise or career mode. But basically you'd be able to define that it's an aquatic temperate plant or something. And you never have to touch biomes or continent. So as long as you included that, if you built it, it would work in game. So that is nice and simple. And with that being said, that is pretty much everything you need to know about making prop mod packs. Like I said, if you wanted to just add new props, it is very, very straightforward. Little tedious, but very straightforward. All you'd have to do is just add another like in it to say 005 and put in five everywhere, you know, everywhere where it says four, copy it and write five. And then where you're going to define the model is going to be in the models folder, obviously. And then in the prefab data folder, you would just kind of um, fill out, you know, whatever you wanted for FlexiColor or billboard materials. And like I said, everything is already notated for you. So you can actually, you know, look at the comments and, you know, follow along that way. But with that being said, I hope you guys have enjoyed today's tutorial. Again, there will be an even easier way of doing this first. And so um, look forward to that in the future. But until then, I hope this will suffice for the community. So thank you for watching and I will see you.